Hello, board game brothers and sisters, and welcome to another Kickstarter review video where I'll let you know everything you need to know about Come On Comics Volume 1. The first thing I want to note is this is Volume 1, so you can expect more comic campaigns from Come On in the future. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of these exclusives show up again in those campaigns. The second thing I want to point out is these aren't really comic books, they're actually graphic novels. Comic books and graphic novels are very similar in that they tell a story in the same way, except graphic novels tend to be much longer and more complex, whereas comic books tend to tell a story over several issues. So of course these graphic novels are going to take place in the universes previously created in Kaman's board games. So the three that are covered in this campaign are Zombicide, Cthulhu Death May Die, and Zombicide Invader. It looks like both the writers and artists that Kaman had brought in to create these graphic novels have quite a history and a lot of experience. So you can really expect top-notch writing and art in these graphic novels. So this is a board game channel, so I know that a lot of my viewers aren't really interested in comic books or graphic novels. So it's worth pointing out that these do come with a lot of extra content and minis for the respective board games that they're based on. If you love comic books and graphic novels, you can think of this as buying those and then getting the minis for free. Or you can think of this like I do, where it's buying more content for the board games that you already love, and you're getting some bonus graphic novels and comic books with that. If you're unsure how you feel about a board game company releasing comic books, Come On actually provides a very lengthy sample of these comic books in the campaign itself. I'll leave a link to that in the description below so you can check it out if you're interested. So I'm going to get straight to the pledges, and these are offered in both English and French, and these are pretty simple pledges. There's the one comic pledge, the two comic pledge, and the three comic pledge. The one comic pledge is $30, the two comic pledge is $55, which saves you about $5 relative to the first pledge. And the three comic pledge is $75, which saves you $15 relative to the one comic pledge. Keep in mind, you're also going to have to pay shipping. And shipping is about 50% more if you're buying all three opposed to just getting the one. So if you're getting the one or two comic book pledge, you're going to be able to choose the comics that you want to get. Along with those comics, you'll get the associated promos and exclusive content that go along with them. This is the same for the third pledge, but obviously you're just getting all three and all their associated content. So the campaign does state that anything exclusive is marked with this Kickstarter exclusive banner. So at first glance, I didn't think these daily unlocks were actually exclusive. But after looking a bit closer, I realized that it does say they're Kickstarter exclusive right at the top of the list. And it also shows that banner on each of the individual updates. So I checked out the retailer pledge as well, and it looks like retailers are going to be getting all this content about the same time as the Kickstarter backers. So you're not really going to get it any sooner by going this route. Although this is offered to retailers, retailers can only get 16 copies of each, including all the Kickstarter exclusives and add-ons. So this will be more difficult to get after the campaign ends. So one thing I like to do with campaigns like this is check in with my local retailers and see if they plan to back this. And then I can make a pre-order with them, usually at a better price. So for all the board gamers out there interested in the exclusive content, I'm going to go through each one of the unlocks now and let you know exactly what it offers to the game. I'll go through the zombie side exclusives first, and you might be asking, is this for the first zombie side or the second edition? And it's actually for both, so you don't have to worry if you own one version or the other. There's still two days left of this campaign, which means there's two unlocks that haven't been revealed yet. I don't know exactly what they are, but I'll let you know what I think after I go through each of them. So right now for zombie side, they're offering seven new survivors, along with five short stories that are exclusive to this campaign. The first survivor is the hobo, and he knows best how to navigate the streets safely. His special abilities allow him to to blend in with the zombies as if he's one of the horde. Next we have Kiko and she knows how to unlock most doors and she's great with the sword. And then we have Yulio who starts with a special item which is his baseball bat that he always has at his side. Diana is a paramedic who can help out her teammates, presumably she can help heal them. And then we have Marion who starts with her own pistol and she's great with firearms and leading her team from harm's way. Then we have Norman who's great at killing and sneaking around. And then we have Harlock and it sounds like she can always move no matter how many zombies are in her way. For the short stories, these are all origin stories and there's an origin for Amy and Doug who are part of the original game and then Marion, Norman and Harlock who are all released in this campaign. The hint for tomorrow's unlock is that these unlocks are going to have their own side of the story to tell. From the image, it looks like this is going to be another short story in the zombie side universe. And then for the final day, it looks like we're going to get another miniature. I don't know if they're saving the best for last, but I'm excited to see what it turns out to be. And then for Cthulhu Death May Die, there's five new investigators, three new cultist card variants, and three origin stories. The first investigator is Lisa, and she claims to be a demon. 
She can make a roll at the end of her turn to try and heal stress or health. At higher levels, she can call out her inner demon to inflict damage on her enemies. And then we have Munoz, and his special ability is that he can move other investigators along with him. This investigator incentivizes players to stick together, and if they do, he'll be able to heal more stress, gain rerolls, or even extra attack dice. Next we have Roko, and he fought in the trenches during the Great War. He's accustomed to stressful situations, and even when he's at full stress, he can still perform one extra reroll. And in addition to this, his brawling and marksman skills also become more powerful. Next we have Annabelle and she can open portals to the other world requesting for divine assistance. She gets to roll bonus dice and select one of the results to keep and use on her next turn. Initially, she'll only be able to do this to help herself, but later in the game, she can help her teammates as well. And then finally, we have Jenkins. He gains detective tokens throughout the game. These tokens initially just allow him to move extra spaces, but eventually they can also grant him extra rerolls, rest in an unsafe place, and even perform extra actions. So next we have the variant cards, and these change the way that the cultists behave in your game. The first variant card is the Mad Cultist, and instead of rolling the two bonus dice, these cultists roll one bonus and one standard die. However, when they they attack, each elder sign also counts as a success. This makes them slightly more unpredictable than normal cultists. Next we have the pyro cultists, and when these are destroyed, each investigator that's within one space of the cultists needs to roll a bonus die, and anyone rolling an elder sign immediately catches on fire which causes damage on their turn. And then finally we have the zealous cultists. These are more tough than regular cultists because not only do they start with one extra health, they're also able to heal wounds whenever they roll an elder sign. The three short stories that go along with these are origin stories for the kid, Jenkins, and Tamara. The clue for tomorrow's unlock is that it will give us the full picture. So it looks like this is going to be a miniature based on an artist, so I wonder if they're going to pull someone from history like they did in the previous campaigns. And then finally, for Zombieside Invader, we have six new survivors and three short stories. These survivors don't have as much information as the other ones, but I'll let you know what I found. First we have Kane, and he's a tough soldier who's an expert in range and melee combat. Next we have Connor, who's great with machinery and leadership. Then we have Oleg, who excels in all types of firepower. Yuko, who doesn't hit very hard but has high survivability. And then we have the really cool Pro Mod, who's actually a robot and doesn't appear to be able to die, but it sounds like there's a reset period where it takes some time for the character to come back. This character can also take direct control of any machinery. And then we have Impuza, who appears to be an alien shapeshifter who can actually camouflage herself in order to move around the Xenos untroubled. When she reveals herself, she can dish out some serious damage. So the characters focused on for the three Zombieside Invader short stories are the Orphans, the Pro Mod, and the Impuza character. The clue for tomorrow's unlock is that whoever it is knows all about quarantines. From the image, it looks like this might be another short story. So next I want to go over the optional buys and there's just been two released so far. First we have the Starcadia Quest, Heart of a Star add-on for $20, and this includes a Starcadia Quest graphic novel, 12 promo quest cards that bring 3 new scenarios that are based on the stories from the comics, and then 4 upgrade tokens that bring in 2 new items that are introduced in the comics. This is the Metal Communicator and the Vacupack Jitter Snack. The next add-on we have is the Rising Sun graphic novel, and there's actually nothing new in this add-on, it's just a remake of things that already existed. With this add-on, you're getting an exclusive hardcover edition of the three Rising Sun issues that were previously published by IDW. You're also getting 96 Kickstarter exclusive Clan and Province mini cards, and these can be used with three special game modes which change the rules of the war. There's the Ninjas of the Rising Sun, where each player can secretly assign a ninja to a province, surprising their opponents and taking down two figures there before the war phase. And then there's the Ichiko mode where each player secretly attempts to predict who will win a battle and if they get it right they steal the war province from that rightful winner. And then there's the merciful conquest where each player secretly chooses a province where the losing figures will not be killed but the winner will gain more victory points. This was previously released but required a pen and paper and this version re-implements it with only the cards. And then finally you'll also be getting the dice tower card set which contains 15 season cards that were originally made for the dice tower and designed by their team. So if you found this video useful make sure to hit that like button to let me know and feel free to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos like this. Say hello in the comments and until next time keep that shelf cluttered and the table full.